<laughs> so yeah, so this this case is supposed to be about the Drupal community and so some um, information for how the community works, what it all is about, because after the Drupal um, camp last month over in Orlando area, um, you know, we had a lot of new people coming and um, you know, Sunyan is still new, Mark is brand new. So I thought it would be a good topic to discuss just for, you know, let people know what's out there and what to do. A lot of people who are new to Drupal, or been in Drupal for a while, this is going to be old hat, maybe you learn something new, we'll see. So the Drupal community, otherwise known as all of us, um, and what I mean by us. So the Drupal community is basically anyone who uses or works on Drupal, that's how I kind of define it. Um, it could be anybody else, but you know, there are kind of different roles that it's broken into. You, know, you have the programmers, um, who actually program the code that runs Drupal. You have the themers who make it look good. The content managers who are people who update the site. And, um, and obviously the end users who interact with your site. So obviously with Drupal, you may go to a site and not even know it's Drupal. That's, that's what the end users are. Those are those people who are interacting with the site. Um, I call programmers people who make the modules, write core, the actual Drupal itself. Um, they write documentation, they address issues for their module. And, basically make Drupal go. <clears throat> Themers, which I consider myself one. Kendall is doing a fist pump <laughs> over there. She's one too. Um, we make Drupal look good, which is basically using building the CSS and the HTML and JavaScript and other components to make the site work, you know, look the way that it should. So we take the you know, a PSD of a file or a design and say, okay, we're going to turn that into an actual website. So that's what we do, and we use Drupal to do that. Content managers are people who maintain the sites and add content to the site. So, you know, for independent people, uh, we tend to turn the site over to someone and let them add their content to it after we've already built up the structure for it. Um, but you know, sometimes you, you know, those people who write the copy use the back end side interface and use the you know give the, the site life basically. And the user, the end user, is obviously just a normal visitor. Um, and they can, those people who can interact passively by just reading the site and, you know, scanning through the content, reading a blog, whatever, or when the commenting in Drupal use, you know, interacting with others on the site with their comments and that sort of thing. So at the end of the day, this is who all of us are trying to impress is the end user. We all want to have, give the end user the best experience possible. That's what everybody in the community is about. That's why we built a community, you know, around Drupal. Um, so which are we? All of the above. And I know we've talked about this graph before. I just had thrown the presentation. This is the learning curve of Drupal. If you can't really see it, you can just Google Drupal learning curve on Google. That's what I did today, and you can find it because I know it's not going to come through on the, uh, the video. But basically, we all come into Drupal with different skill sets, and we all have different levels. And compared to other CMSs like WordPress, Joomla, whatever, they're you know, a little easier. Drupal, it's almost like a backwards curve. You can see kind of the people falling off and dying and that sort of thing. So, <laughs> um, really, with with Drupal, we are Drupalistas, is what a lot of people you know call it. I can't remember if it's Dries or someone else coined that term. But those are people who wear we all wear different hats because a lot of times we are the programmers or we are the themers if we're fixing something, make it look better, or we're adding the content ourselves because a client can't figure out how to do it or we're testing someone else's site to make sure it's working the way that it needs to be. So we are all, all of these at the same time. Because we build sites, we troubleshoot sites, and we contribute to the community at large. And realizing white on, a, on this color background is probably not going to show up in the video, but my bad. <laughs> it looks all right. That's okay? Okay. Um, so what does it take to be a Drupalista? Drupal.org. Know it and love it. The root and the heart of Drupal is on Drupal.org. That's where um, what you find on there, you find Drupal itself. You can find all of your modules. And you can find documentation and help for your Drupal problems, which you will have Drupal problems at some point. <laughs> um, Drupal.org is basically the community's site. It's where everything is distributed from officially. There aren't tons of different, there are other Drupal sites out there, but all the official code and modules and everything live off of Drupal.org. Um, most of the documentation for the site, you know, for Drupal in terms of the individual modules themselves or the core Drupal um, how-tos, you know, frequently asked questions, all that sort of stuff is on Drupal.org. And then there's the, always the issue queues for each individual modules. And the issue queue is where you find people, people report problems, the creator responds to the problems, 
and they go back and forth until the problems are solved. Or feature oh. requests. Or feature requests, that sort of thing. Um, and it's the web, it's based, Drupal is based on the website that keeps on giving. It answers your questions of how do I do this? Um, more than anything else, though, I think it really does have some of the friendliest people you'll see on the internet, which is kind of an oxymoron friendly people on the internet because God knows who you're talking to or who's doing anything out there. But um, anybody who's been familiar with open source and other communities, other um, projects out there know that if things aren't scattered up, if things are scattered about places, um, you tend to get it's hit or miss of who you're going to interact with. By having everything be on one site, on Drupal.org, you tend to get everything, um, you know, it draws everybody to the one place. And uh, out of all the other projects I've worked on, your views, other software I've used, I haven't come across anybody who is any other place that's as helpful to new people and experienced people alike as the people who use Drupal, which is on Drupal.org. Um, you have you know, people who answer questions without a problem, and it's all volunteer. Nobody does this, and you know, most people don't do this for pay. It's all just helping each other out. Um, so that's one of the biggest things I'd like about Drupal.org. You know, and of course, free. Everything in Drupal pretty much is free. You have Drupal itself is free. You have the modules that are free. You have documentation that's free. You have answers to help that's free. Um, you can certainly buy certain things. <clears throat> there's been talk of a Drupal app store, which I don't know if that's ever going to materialize or not. Um, there's been, you know, obviously you can buy individual themes that are already made. But for the most part, Drupal is do it yourself, and it's free, and it's out there. And, that's, and everything on Drupal.org is free. So just to give some tips of how to use Drupal.org for when you're building new, when you're building your site. If you're trying to find a module to use and you're not sure what to use, you want to always check the usage statistics. Each module at the bottom of the page has statistics on how many, how often the site's used. Something like Views has 412,937 sites use Views. That's a good number. <laughs> That's actually the highest out of all the modules other than Drupal itself. Um, so you want to have something that's, that has a high number like this, because that means that there's other people out there using it, it's been tested, it's been put through the ringer, and it's going to do most of what you want to do. Bad would be something like this, where it's the bonus is obsolete, it's made for an older version, there's a very, very low number of sites that are using it, that's, that's not a good sign. Or it last modified in 2010, that's probably not a good sign either. There is a catch to all of this. Drupal has lots of different ways to do the same thing, but sometimes you have one thing that you just have to find to do, and if you find a module that does what you need it to do, you don't necessarily have to care about these usage statistics. If you find a module that says, okay, I need something to send an email out the third Wednesday of every month, oh look, here's a module for that, boom. If only, only three other people use it, but it solves your problem, it's okay to use, I think. Yeah. Sometimes the numbers are low because it's a niche. Right. This, sometimes, yeah, niche niche <coughs> modules might have you know small number of uses, but and generally speaking, as a rule for people who are newer to Drupal, you'll want to use stuff that is more verified, more tested and used, and things like that. And the biggest thing is the the less number of uh, usage there is, the less likely you are to get help from the community. That, would that that's that kind of brings up what <coughs> Chris just said. That kind of brings up my next point of checking the issue queue. Um, Issues that are getting, you want to check and see how often the issue queue has been updated. How often people have either been posting new things or the Mike maintainer has, has responded to things. The top one says this was responded to five days ago. That's pretty reasonable. The other one, 21 weeks ago, 50 weeks ago, 50 weeks ago, a year ago. It's like those are not good response times. So if you come, if you use this module and you run into a problem, you may not find help right away for it because person may not be doing it because everything is volunteer and free and you know people do what they can when they can so sometimes people just get busy they have lives they just can't get their issue queue but you want to try to check the issue queue and make sure that what you're going to be using for something that's specific for your site is being responded to just in case you run into any problems that you can't figure out you can always of course check the issue queue itself to try to find your problem by going through and searching through the issues and seeing what's been responded to if you have a problem Usually, someone else has had that problem too. So you can, if it's been reported, you can find it. There's usually a solution, or they're working on figuring out a solution, or adding a new feature, or whatever, to address it in, a, in another version. So Drupal.org sounds awesome, right? So how do we get involved? You want to register on Drupal.org. 
which if you just go to the home page, it says log in or create account, log in. <laughs> go to user slash register. It's just like any other Drupal site, obviously. <laughs> you just go in and register, create an account. It's free, obviously. Um, and when you register on the site, you're actually, that gives you a lot more uh, abilities to do things on the site. You can post questions to, to the maintainers. You can start your own project if you wanted to. You can answer questions, help out others. Um, and it's all, they've also added a feature recently so that it used to be if you want to subscribe to an issue, you could, like, say you have a problem with a module and it's not being responded to immediately, but you, know, you want to follow the thread of the, the progress of it. You used to have to type subscribe as a message and then that would subscribe you to it. Now they actually added a feature so that you can just like, kind of tag it and it tags that message. And then you're, when you sign into the site, you get a dashboard with all of your issues that you've responded to or you know, projects you've created, that sort of thing. And it can, you can check that every day and see when it's been updated. So like a little personal guide to updating the site or just, you know, following what, what, you're, what you care about. If you do need more help, there are other, other resources out there, not free necessarily, but they are well worth the money. Um, what Harry was talking about is DrupalEyes.me, which is a product of Lullabot, who are some of the bigger, probably one of the biggest Drupal shops out there that's not Acquia, which is run by Andres, the founder. Um, Lullabot basically was used to do video discs and stuff like you know, downloadable videos. So they finally just had enough content, they decided to turn it into its own site and its own subscription service. So DrupalEyes.me is basically a video subscription service. You get access to all their content. You can download and watch the videos. Um, actually, they even if you have a Roku player at your house, they actually have a Roku channel now for it. So you can actually watch Drupal on your TV, which is kind of cool. Um, it's not free. It costs, I think, when I checked today, it's $320 a year. But if you're new to Drupal and you're going to be doing this seriously and you want to learn how to do something, and videos are a better way to do it. And I have seen a lot about videos. They have specific code examples, they walk you through everything and from all levels, beginning to intermediate to advanced. Um, it is a good value. Um, it's DrupalEyes.me if you want to check it out. Um, the other options are books. If you like to read um, <laughs> and you like to learn things beside, you know, take something that's not at your computer, the, these are some of the best <coughs> books I think that are out there right now. If you've got a Drupal 7, you can't see it on this picture, but the bottom is a list of some of the big maintainers of Drupal. See how thick it is. Yeah, you can't see how thick it is either. It's about the size 1200 of. 1200 pages. Oh, 1200 pages? 1200 pages, yeah, 1200 pages. Is that what they include in the glossary? Is that like the actual book? No, that's the actual book. It's 1200 pages. Oh my god. Okay, well. So that's, that's probably not those, okay. those are like <laughs> I'm going to date myself. Those of you that learned it back in the day, the great big Q using 123 book was out there. I, I didn't know it was that big. Yes. I, I've seen. You know, and they're only going to give away that is because I was reading something today on the site, and they're going to give away a, a free copy or a free Google Cog ticket uh -huh. if you can figure out the best use for it. <laughs> and I was reading some of the uses. <laughs> Somebody like table leveler, and, you know, door stop. Um, but that's going to be like a bible if you're one of those people who needs the, the need to have an extra fingertips of how do I do this? Pull it up. You could use the definitive guide to Drupal Seven for that because it's going to have all that information. Um, Using Drupal by O'Reilly is my personal favorite all-time Drupal book. It's got a lot of really useful examples and information. They actually just updated for Drupal 7 in November. Um, I thought it was. I thought I saw it. She's out. No, she, she's having trouble. <coughs> oh, okay. Well, due out. If that's again due by, by the Lola Bot boys. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Lola Bot, Angie, and Addison, and yeah. uh, Nathan, and Jeff, and all those people. But they're. Uh, it's a really great book. It's definitely worth, even if you just bought the Drupal 6 version, you could probably get by with enough of the information in there to at least seriously get started on it. Uh, but using Drupal 1, it, it just is a good reference for pretty much anything that you would need. Um, the last one is Front End Drupal by Imogene Hogman and Constantine Paper, I don't know. That's, that's <coughs> also another one of my favorites. That's for theming and, develop, and designing and things like that. Like anybody who's new to theming or wants to get into it more, that's one of the really good books to use because it's not a boring technical manual. It's actually fun to read. Like she actually gives you good examples. She actually, it's actually kind of humorous. Um, if you ever get a chance to go to a Drupal Con or any other speech, is where Emma Jane is speaking. She's a, she's a really good speaker. She's kind of very high energy. Um, some people think it's a little too, you know, she, she, she basically is, is very energetic and very excited about Drupal. And so the book, that kind of spills over into the front end Drupal. Um, so for, if you want to figure out how to make your site look pretty and look good and things like that, that's a really good book to start from. It's not real thick. It's probably you know, three, 400 pages at that. Um, 
Back to some of the free stuff out there, though. Um, DrupalEasy.com is run by a company, um, a company called Anello Consulting over in uh, or by NASA. <laughs> I don't know exactly what city East Coast. East Coast, yeah, East Coast of Florida. Uh, Mike, Michael Anello and Ryan Price, who are two of the people who created the Florida Drupal Camp, it just happened in February. Um, they do bi-weekly podcasts, talking to people all throughout the Drupal community. Um, the podcasts are fun, and they're very, very informative. Their blog is very good. They have lots of good examples, lots of information out there. Um, behind Drupal.org, if I can't find something on there, I usually go to Drupal Easy and see if I can find it. I've got half of my bookmarks for how to do things in Drupal come from Drupal Easy. Um, Lullabot also, aside from the Drupalize.me, also has their own blog. They update pretty regularly with different information and issues and things like that um, to find the information. The, uh, the third one that I said seriously <laughs> is Google. For some reason, it's easier to search Drupal.org on Google than it is to search Drupal.org on Drupal.org. I don't know why, but it is. And That's true of a lot of websites. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I found with Google, if I type in like Drupal, how do I do this, whatever, you can, you can find things a lot quicker on there and a lot easier. So Google is, you know, Google is Google, but it, it is really useful for finding Drupal information. Because you also get, there are some other sites out there that are not Drupal specific, like Stack Overflow, that have other information for other programming languages, but they do have a lot of Drupal stuff as well that you might come across. Plus you also can, with Google, you can find blogs of individual developers and things like that that address certain issues. Um, you know, for theming, like Morton over in the Netherlands, his, his blog has a lot of good information if you get past the profanity. <laughs> um, but those are some of the free resources. Um, and some other like, just other like-minded individuals. Um, this top picture is from the Drupal camp like three weeks ago, taken by our very own Kindle. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it says, it, you copyrighted it at the bottom, it says copyright Kindle. It's, a, it's just sitting on my, on my like, Picasa export, so oh, I didn't realize right. it until I put them all up, and I was like, oh. Oh, okay. well, <laughs> free to use, free to use. It's <laughs> this was our crowd, which was a little bit over 300 people for Florida, which I've been to three Drupal camps now in Florida, and the first one I went to in 2010 was like about 175. Last year was like 250. This year was over 300. So it's definitely getting out there and growing. And just like the makeup of this group, it's all ages, all you know, skills and levels and everything like that. They have a whole Drupal day where you can learn everything. Um, you did you do that soon yet, or did you? How how was that? It's really good. Did you feel better by the end of the day? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Make sure it's, it's worthwhile. Um, the bottom picture I had to switch in here. That's from Drupal College Chicago, which that had over three thousand people, and that's the big international one. The next one is coming up this month in a couple weeks at in Denver. They do two a year. They do one in one in the U.S. and one in Europe. The U.S. one is in Denver this year. Um, Joe and Rachel are going to that, so hopefully they can next time maybe <coughs> share a little bit about it. Um, but yeah, that picture has, they try to get everybody who was there at the camp, or at the con, in there. So, um, so the, wh where else can you find information for people? Come to the meetups like you're doing here. This is, this is always useful. Um, the TV Doug site is always being updated. I'm ashamed to admit that I don't check it as regularly as I probably should. I get people asking questions and I should respond better. But Kendall and Chris are very good about posting on there. Um, you, you post on there. You, yeah, a lot of us post on there. So if you have a question that you can't figure out, just post on there and someone will try to respond to it. Um, or email. Well, we can get an email list going around again. I don't think we've done that in a while. Well, you can always look up our email addresses on the site. Is that public though? Well, we're, all, we're all supervisors, we're all, we're all administrators. Uh, I guess doing? that's true. Yeah, okay. That's how I do it. No secrets on the site. Twitter, there's a lot of good people to follow on Twitter. That's too many to name. Um, I'm on there. Chris yeah. is on. Yeah, well, that's on your Twitter account? Yeah, you can just look at my Twitter. And, uh, most people I follow on my Twitter are um, yeah, but Drew hot sauce people. No, not on the list. I don't, I don't, I don't organize enough on it. That, too much work to organize something like that. But, <laughs> um, but Twitter does have a lot of really good people to follow if you, if you tweet. Um, I more just read it than actually post anything myself unless I really have a question. Like I was, I had an issue the other day that I needed a, a programmer for and I got a couple responses by saying, hey, any Drupal programmers available? And I got a couple people interested. So um, the IRC chat room is uh, Drupal Florida. I don't use IRC. I'll go in there. Does anybody else go in there or check it out? I do. 
it's, it's not a very active channel, the, the Florida well, branch. Yeah. These days, there seems to be about like seven or eight people that kind of just hang out in there, but nobody really talks. But Pound Drupal is super active channel. Okay. Almost overwhelming. So <laughs> there are other channels like uh, there's the Omega channel. That's a good one. Omega, <laughs> there's and Omega there's channel, also uh, I forget what the names of them are, but there's like a Drupal support channel as well, which is for paid support. And then there's uh, a couple of other general ones as well. I don't know. They're listed on Drupal.org. Maybe when we post this video, we can post a list of those yeah. on, the, on the recap on the site or something like that. Um, Drupal Camp is another place to meet. Like minded people, that's obviously already passed for right now, but there's going to be a South Florida Drupal camp in the fall. Um, they haven't announced where, you know, where or when or anything like that yet, but it, it will happen because they had one last year and they're trying to get two going in a year. And <laughs> two going in a year because Florida's big enough that we can have a couple of those. We're not just like some small little state. Um, and then DrupalCon, obviously, there's the US one is in March and uh, it's not sold out, so you could still get tickets, but I think they've gone up in price. Um, and is anybody else going besides Joe? Are you going, Kendall? Okay. Well, someone could, so you guys have to tell someone about it. Tell us about it next time or something. Cause, oh, like give like a recap? Yeah, just anything good that you found out or anything like that. Okay. Um, and then there's also one in Europe in, where is it? Munich this year? Yeah, in like August, September time. So if you want to go to Europe, take a vacation and go to the <laughs> Um So how else can you help with this community? Because you now that you know, you know, all the resources for being a Drupalista, what can you do? We all help each other. You know, we all help each other with the you know these meetups when we talk and help each other through questions and issues you help, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a programmer, a theme or a user, whatever. You can help each other out with all these issues. Um, you can contribute any way you can. Um, the Drupal Association, which I don't know how many people are actually members or even are aware of it, that's the organization, it's a nonprofit, it's it's over in Europe, but it's it's the nonprofit organization that basically handles the cost of Drupal.org, like the, the server costs and paying for that, and the, um, the they help organize the, the Drupal cons. Like they're the ones who are behind all that sort of stuff. Like they actually put it together. They don't it's a nonprofit, but it's all run off sponsorships and donations. So I bought a sponsorship last year. I think it was like 50 bucks, and that just goes to the association to help them pay for their operating costs to keep Drupal running, basically. Um, if you're if you like to write. You know, if you think you can explain something better than a mod than a module developer does, because not all programmers are writers and not all writers are programmers, but if you think that you can kind of explain the two better, writing documentation for a module isn't hard to do. You can just submit some text to a to a user once you've registered on the site or to you know to a module and say, Hey, maybe if you explain it better like this, you can contribute documentation like that. There's there's tons of things on Drupal.org that need more documentation written for. Because one one big example I can think of right off the top of my head is Omega. If you, if you make a theme, if you look at it, it says, if you look at the readme file, it says, explanation will go here. Like, it, there, it's not useful, you know. But they have a couple, um, like, documentation sites. Yeah, Extra, one on Drupal. But they're not, they're not what they need to be, I don't think. I tried to contribute to it, and they pulled the page, and they were like, you have to read our handbook, you have to contribute this way. I'm like, okay. okay well, <laughs> so I have to, like, well, rewrite it. Okay, so, I mean, the module developers still, and the developers who build the projects are still, um, <laughs> Responsible for their own content at the end of the day, so they can they can be you know veto that down. But if you want to write documentation, there's there's a whole group on Drupal.org about writing documentation for Drupal.org, um, and you can get in there. Um, help out with an issue queue. So if you find a module, someone says, "Hey, my site's doing this," and you can think you can recreate that or try to test and recreate it, you can help verify that by posting the information about it, or you know saying, "Oh yeah, I confirm this happens," or <clears throat> just other things that you can do. Basically, help out the maintainers and the mod, the, you know the programmers and other people just, you know, every post that you put on Drupal.org, if you confirm that something's happening, that helps tell the module developer that it's happening, it's a problem. Or if you say, this isn't happening, when I, or I fixed it when I did this. You know, anything that you can figure out, these little things, that becomes information that gets stored on the site that becomes shows up on Google, helps solve someone else's problem. So if you can write, you know, help out with an issue, that's a good way to do it. And obviously just spread more about Drupal. Once you get, you know, comfortable with it, once you get, you know, start building the site and you're like, wow, this is, coolest thing ever. Uh, just thought tell more people. I mean, that's how we get everybody here. You know, it's, this group started out with like six of us, and it's, it's you know, most of us are still here. <laughs> um, and that has just basically helped get the, you know, grow the group. That's how the, the camps and the columns and everything get bigger and bigger. Drupal's at 1%, runs 1% of the websites on the internet right now, which is a lot of websites, but, you know, WordPress runs 
So you know, the more we start, <coughs> WordPress. yeah, WordPress. The more we start, <coughs> more work we start about Drupal, the better, the more talented people are going to bring in there, make it more get better. So, um, so what should you not do? <laughs> um, don't be a jerk. This this sounds silly, but if you're going to be posting on the, you know, if you're going to be helping coming to these meetups, if you're going to be answering someone's question, don't be a jerk about it. Just if you know the answer, you know the answer. If you don't know the answer, you don't. That great community spirit that we have, where everybody's nice to each other and doesn't cause any problems, that don't, that doesn't happen just instantly. It's like everybody has to kind of think about what they're going to say, be nicer to each other, make sure that we get that community going and that keeps everybody happy. Um, and of course, just the old Drupal adage of never hacking core. Anybody, for the new people in Drupal, that just means when you download Drupal itself, don't modify any of the core files that run Drupal. If you say, oh, this needs to say something different in here, I'll just fix this one file. No, you don't ever <coughs> want to do that because it causes all sorts of problems for me. For updating later on in your site, you can break things that they will never ever support because they're not going to go in there and say, hey, you, you messed with this, so it's not going to be fixed. Um, and plus, if you hack core, God kills a kitten. So, <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Any questions? Anything? Any other things I forgot about the community? <laughs> All right, everybody give them a huge round of applause. Yay! 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 Yay!